So just wanted to point out that just like on the networks themselves where we could visually represent that, we can still show you the complete power chain uh, as, we, uh, as we go through there. So knowing what the effect would be if we were to remove uh, you know, that particular server, remember we have this cabinet over here, that that could get my heat gauge back down. What we would probably want to do then as we're looking at that server is to think about trying to move it somewhere else. So I could just go up here and say, well, I'm going to set it in another cabinet. I know exactly where I want to put it, and I could just uh, put it in a planning mode put it in that cabinet, model it, tell me exactly what you position in the new cabinet I needed to go to and, uh, and do that. But what I'm going to do is leverage the knowledge that uh, InLight has about all the available space power and cooling in all of my data centers. So what I want to do then, I put it into moving, is I'm going to use the auto allocate feature of, uh, of InLight. And it's going to come through and just remind me that we do have two uh, uh, two DMs running on this, and it's going to say, "Well, where would you like to uh, where would you like to uh, move this?" And I'm going to say, "I want to look at my uh, uh, my bronze room is where I want to consider moving that. It's just another data center floor that I've got there." And then, of course, I know everything about that particular server. You know, I knew it was a seven U server, right? And then I'm just going to give it some other parameters that may or may not be important to me. Uh, does it have to fit into a cabinet designated for a particular usage? And I'm going to say, well, that really doesn't matter to me. Yeah, it's got to have a 19-inch rack. I don't care about KVM switches. I do need that diverse power. Uh, do I have to have a particular uh, domain segment that I've got to come into? And so after you give it some criteria from an infrastructure standpoint, then you can come in and say, well, uh, where do we want to try to do it? So I'm going to say, you know, search the cabinets in that silver room where this might would fit. And so it brings me back a list of all of the cabinets in order of available power is the de facto sequencing. So the best fit would be in this cabinet BR179, which is in my bronze room, is where I should do that uh, for the best fit. But I could consider any of these. So if that's what I want, I just complete the auto allocate. And what that does is it takes it out of the first cabinet, puts it in a, in a, uh, a the scratch pad of where that other cabinet's going to be. Because the one thing I didn't tell it was what you position in the new cabinet. So I have to go in and, and tell it that. But this at least will leverage the in-light knowledge about all of your different uh, modules that are out there to help you figure out uh, you know, where these things uh, ought to go. So I'm just going to pop that back out. So that's kind of the way you look at your data center. You slice and dice it with those different overlays, how you can go into your, uh, your cabinet planner, see what the effect on power, heat, and cooling would be, kind of at an individual rack and a server level. But obviously what a lot of you folks are facing is either tech refreshes or data center consolidations and those types of things. So there are other ways uh, that this can be done as well. And that's in the form of InLight's uh, predict module, uh, which is that last process model, if you will, uh, that, uh, that Alan showed you. So we're just going to create a new one here for us to take a peek at. And what we're going to do is say we want to take a baseline of a given data center floor. And then once we create our baseline, we want to say what would the effect be of either removing servers and racks and all, or adding servers and racks, or some combination uh, thereof. So we've got to give our little planning scenario here a uh, a name. So I'll just give it uh, I'll just give it my initials. You've got to pick a uh, a floor you want to model here. So let me just real quickly go down, and we'll uh, we'll actually get this silver room that we started uh, working with uh, earlier. So it would be something familiar with it. So we're going to set that as the location that we're going to model. And we're going to model some moves over the next four uh, either weeks or months or you know whatever we want to do. We'll say we would be realistic and say over the next uh, four months we want to kind of kind of do this. And we know that uh, we're, we're, we're working with about uh, you know of the data center, we've got about 3,000 and 1,000 kilowatts we want to, uh, to work with there. Oops, my mouse is going crazy here. So what we're going to do now is go out and take our, uh, take our baseline. 
So the next thing it says is, well, in that particular silver room, do you want to look at everything that's currently in there? Well, no, it's no use looking at the things that we already are taking out, right, that we're already recycling, that we've decommissioned, that are already moving. So again, it's up to you. Make the, uh, uh, make the theory of where you want to look there. And then it says, OK, do you want to model just servers, or do you want to do cabinets as well, network devices? Uh, what are we going to be trying to, uh, to, uh, to model here? And so I'm just going to leave all of those and say they're all fine. And then again, because we give you the option of cabinet usage, do you want to restrict this? I'm just going to say it doesn't matter. I'll do them all. So at this point, now that I've given it, told it what room, it already knows what's in that room. I made some selections of things to exclude. It goes out and creates a baseline of what my power, heat, cooling, and space is for that particular unit. It brings me back a little summary page here. And so now I go in and do my what ifs. So it says currently, you know, here are the servers that are populating that particular uh, uh, data center floor, the quantities I have of each. And so now tell me which ones you want to play what ifs about. Well, I want to take some of these uh, HP guys. I want those models, maybe some of these. I also want to, uh, you know, go down and maybe grab some stuff from my materials catalog that I uh, don't even have currently in there. It's going to be a new addition, but that's fine. I need to have that go in there as well. And then we'll go grab one more from our existing unit. And then if you'll recall, I said over the next four months, I'm going to make some changes to how this room is populated. So if we go into our first read and say that we're actually going to get rid of those 10 servers uh, in that very first week, but here we're going to increase these by uh, 35. We're trying to do a data center consolidation here, we'll say. And we're also then going to have to bring in, you know, 10 more of those, uh, 30 in that second week. Uh, we'll go 15 in the third and 15 in the fourth. And then this was that new device that we were going to bring in. We're going to bring in 10 of these guys all in the first week. So show me, based on this scenario, what would be the effect to my baseline. So I just say, show my charts. And so you can see over the four-week period, it gives you your baseline, and then what would happen after month one, month two, month three, month four, to my space, my power, and my cooling. And if I wanted to drill down into any one of those, I just double-click on it, actually single-click on it, and it brings me back you know, more detailed. And this initial run was used using the published power specs. So maybe I'd rather use that derated uh, power spec where we lower that you know huge startup power that the uh, manufacturer does, so I can bring that down and kind of take out of that a little value. Or you know if you're a very efficient data center and you've actually got that real time, I can you know peek at it and look at it that way. So this was just one scenario. Maybe I now would want to go over here and change these, right? Maybe I want to change the sequencing, or I'm saying you know I'm going to get rid of these ProLiance too, and also go to some other Blade servers. So I can have as many what-if type of scenarios as I uh, as I need to do to help me in that uh, help me in that whole planning process. So this is the the predict module within the uh, within the Inlight Center. And then the last thing I want to touch on before I uh, before we open this up for questions is, well, how do you do bulk loading uh, of things? I'm getting in 50, you know, uh, of a particular type of server. I don't want to have to manually take each server, go mount it, go test it, hook it up, and all of that. And one of the things that uh, Inlight provides is what they refer to as their bulk data manager. And this is a web API-enabled set of smart templated uh, worksheets that I can come in. And first off, it's a query tool, number one. Hey, show me, as of the, the last run, real time, go out, hit the Inlight database, Show me what kind of uh, assets that I have out there in a particular location. And do I want to look at all assets, or do I only want to look at, say, servers? And I'll say, load from my Inlight database. And it will very quickly bring me back a list of all of my, uh, all of my servers. And again, I, I could have put a filter on there. I'm just going to do that, and we'll get this down and maybe only come down here and look at that, uh, look at that silver room, because that makes a lot more, uh, lot more sense. Uh, than, than bringing everything from every floor there. And so once it does that, 
it, it brings me back again. This is an intelligent spreadsheet that I've got here. Uh, it, every server name, its unique identity, what room it's in, what chassis it's mounted in, what U position it's mounted in, is it facing front or back, how many power plugs are required, must have hung up here a little bit, uh, for that particular device. And then, so not only can I use this as a great way to query what's in the system, but then if I wanted to bring in, say, you know, uh, an additional, you know, 15 Sunfire V100s to take up a couple of U's each, right? I could just find those in my database, copy that one field, uh, paste it into my spreadsheet, and then the only thing I would need to do would be to go over and say, well, what U do you want to uh, do? You want to load uh, those devices in? So that's really the only variable I've got to give it. And when I say to synchronize with uh, with Inlight, what it will do is it will double check where I said I wanted to mount it in what cabinet and in what U position. It'll actually double check to make sure that space is actually free in that cabinet. And if it isn't, it'll bring me back an error message and say you've got an improper value for uh, for this particular asset that you're trying to do. Otherwise, it'll take this you know very copy pasting into an Excel spreadsheet. It'll take that and immediately update in bulk, i.e. bulk data manager, uh, the InLight database. So it becomes a very, very fast and efficient way uh, to do uh, to do massive moves there. And I don't know what uh, what's going on here, but there there's the list as you can kind of see here, right? So for uh, you know any given uh, IBM series here, it's mounted in this particular cabinet. Uh, here's the cabinet name. How's it being used? If you're keeping that total system used that's doing what cabinet U number is being taken up, mounting direction, serial number, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Again, if I said I wanted to take uh, uh, that uh, Sun device that I was looking at or the Sunfire V100s, if I wanted to take that and say I want to just cut and paste that into 35 new lines, change the U number in the cabinet where it's being mounted, I could just I could that quickly come in and update my uh, update my cabinets. So pretty, uh, pretty well thought out solution. Great reporting as we started with, with the hard reports and the uh, dashboard analytics. Uh, the ability to view your floor from the perspective of heat, space, power uh, that you have there. To be able to model a given, uh, a given rack and to see what your heat load, either real time or manufacturer spec uh, power and cooling that's uh, going on there. And then being able, of course, to model where might I better place this, either directly because I know where I want to put it, or to use the modeling, uh, the auto allocate feature of uh, uh, of InLight to kind of help me go through and do that. And then, of course, again for your larger, more strategy-oriented uh, sessions, is where we come in and we start to do the uh, uh, we start to come in and do the. Uh, uh, predict module with its create a baseline of a given location and then let me play with any number of what if scenarios until I come up with the uh, with the exact plan that uh, that we want to do.